This learning session will focus on physical assessment skills for pharmacists in clinical practice. The aims include, first, practice issues and considerations related to physical assessment. Second, what to focus on when conducting physical assessment. Third, basic physical assessment skills. Fourth, relationship between physical assessment and medication review. Physical examination refers to the task used to establish findings. Meanwhile, physical assessment is used in reference to the decision-making process. Pharmacists performing physical assessment not to result in a medical diagnosis but to support the management of drug-related problems. Several issues and considerations in conducting physical assessment. First, physical touching. Pharmacists should aware about their limitation, what they can and cannot touch. Second, pharmacists need training to be competent in physical assessment. Third, Pharmacists should not make a medical diagnosis. Fourth, be prepared. Explain to the patient regarding the needs for physical assessment. Chaperone may also be needed. Fifth, pharmacists should be aware their own responsibilities to manage drug-related problem. Sixth, pharmacists should continue to develop the physical assessment skills. Pharmacist conducts physical assessment to evaluate the patient's condition before the initiation of drug therapy and to identify physical evidence to support drug therapy effects in terms of effectiveness or safety. Combining finding from physical assessment, medication history and other information, pharmacists can establish drug-related problems such as drug side or adverse effects, treatment failure, or drug therapy non-adherence. Common physical assessments conducted by pharmacists include measuring blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, respiratory rate, and palpatory pressure. The usual systems to be focused on include general, gastrointestinal system, ear, nose and throat, and pulmonary system, neuromuscular system, cardiovascular system, and integumentary system. Four basic skills to conduct physical assessment. First, inspection, to visually denote any abnormality. Second, percussion, tapping of body surface. Third, palpation, feel using finger or hand. Fourth, auscultation, listening for abnormal sound. When doing general assessment, the pharmacist should conduct appropriate general observation, measure the weight and height, Look for body proportion and abnormal movement. For the assessment of each system, the four basic techniques may be applied. Let's look at the ear, nose and throat, and pulmonary system. Please read the text and look for the attached figures. Chest configurations may affect the lung capacity and pulmonary function. For example, pectus excavatum may have smaller lung volume. Patient can also present it with various respiration patterns. Some of these patterns can be induced by medications. sound on the other hand, can be used to support the present of acute problem and effectiveness of drug therapy. For example, heart failure patient with lung crepitation may indicate the present of pulmonary edema, or wheezing is resolved after receiving anti-asthmatic medication. This is an example of physical assessment algorithm for sore throat. central and peripheral nervous system. Look for abnormal movements. Test for muscle tone and strength. For diabetic patient, nerve sensation test can be conducted. Another interesting assessment that the pharmacist can explore is on osteoarthritis. Many osteoarthritic patients may be coming to the community pharmacy for painkillers.
Next system is cardiovascular system. Inspect neck vein for extended jugular pressure. The pharmacist should also be very familiar with blood pressure measurement. Heart with murmur sound is abnormal. This is due to incomplete close of the heart valve. Murmur can occur between first and second heart sounds. Or between second and first heart sounds. In measuring blood pressure, do you think that the readings between left and right arms will be different? Look at the blood pressure reading for patient A, patient B, and patient C. What can you conclude? Now, we look at the ECG tracing. The PR interval should be less than 0.21 second, and QT interval should be about 0.42 second. On the ECG paper, one big box is equivalent to 0.2 second, thus PR interval should be within one big box. In clinical setting, for each patient, there will be 12 ECG patterns in line with the 12 surface leads. 6 central leads, 6 chest leads, V1 to V6. The amplitude of the R wave will depends on the location of the lead in relation to the heart axis showed as red arrow. The following are examples of heart block. Either first degree, second degree, or third degree. Next, are the examples of supraventricular arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Next, are the examples for ventricular arrhythmias, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, torsed to puntis. Next, is an example of 12 leads ECG on acute myocardial infarction. Look for ST depression on leads 1, AVL. Now, look for ST elevation on leads 2, 3, AVF, V4, V5 and V6. Next system is the integumentary system. This is the easiest system to investigate hydration status. Tongue will be one of the common observation done. Poor hydration may increase risk for drug side or adverse effect. This is an example of algorithm to assess dandruff. Rash is a common skin or cutaneous reaction due to medication. Pharmacists should master the rash assessment skill. photos. Can you suggest possible medications that can cause these reactions? Look at these two photos. Can you suggest possible medications that can cause these signs? assessment can also support pharmacokinetic monitoring of selected medications. For example, ability to swallow may help the pharmacist to choose the best dosage form for the patient. If the patient have high central venous pressure, CVP, and edema of the lower limbs, these may indicate fluid overload and high volume of distribution. may also signify renal excretion issue. Steps in conducting physical assessment. 
Greet the patient and introduce yourself. Build rapport with the patient. Explain what you wish to do. Think about the need for chaperone. Conduct the physical assessment. End it with explanation on the next process if appropriate. Thanks the patient and document everything. Physical assessment requires continuous training. Remember, practice make perfect. This will also improve patient, pharmacist contact time. Hopefully you have gained some new insights from the sharing session. Thank you.